Hello guys, this is Karthik from ExilAutomation.com and this is part 13 of our BDD video series. And in this part, we're going to discuss about scoped bindings. Before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 12 since this part has some similarity from that part. Bindings. So before beginning about the scope bindings, let's discuss about bindings. So bindings in SpecFlow are global as we know. Hence, each and every steps in feature files of a scenario are tied with their specific step definitions. If there are cases where we need to change the scope of the step to be executed in a certain conditions using existing bindings we have, then we will end up with an ambiguity problem because we cannot use the same binding name to be used for two different steps in two different files. In order to resolve this problem, SpecFlow has something called as scope bindings. Using the scope attribute for any step definition, we can restrict certain hooks, like we can restrict the scope of binding to be executed based on a feature file, based on a scenario, or based on a tags. So these hooks can be executed based on the scope which is defined within them. Let's see them in an action with an analogy. For that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. As you can see here in my project, I have created a very simple project with two features. One is login feature and another one is user login feature. And if you see these two features, we have a feature name with customer login and it says simple feature to demonstrate customer login features. And it has a at my tag. So let's quickly change this to customer. And there is a scenario for login for customer photo. And here there is a steps for this scenario as given I have opened the application and I log into application. Then I see customer photo. And there is one more feature where it has a user login feature and it has a scenario login for user portal. So let me change this tag to add user. So the scenario here is login for the user portal and it has the same steps given I have opened the application and I log into application, then I see user portal. So let's quickly generate some steps for them and see how we can get into the problem that we are going to address right now. So for that, I'm just gonna generate the steps I'm going to copy this method to clipboard and I'm going to quickly create a class here or a simple step definition class here. Let's give this as login. All right, and it has some basic template code, so I'm going to delete them and I'm going to paste the clipboard code. So I'm just going to save this code and you can see there is one more step in both of them at least in this particular login is missing. It says then I see user portal. All right. So let me quickly generate that one as well. So I'm going to copy this code to the clipboard and let's copy that here as well. Now all the steps are binded in our login.cs. Great. So what is the problem in these two features? If you closely look into the problem here, you can see that, and I log into application. Actually, these are two different application, small application, let's say, and they have more or less the same scenarios here. But only thing is, if a person logs into that particular application, it appears to be a customer portal and for another application logs into as a user portal application. So these are completely two different applications just for an understanding purpose I'm saying. But as you can see here, these two steps are common and this particular step alone is changing. But if you see the ambiguity here, this login for the customer portal is different from the user portal. If we try to use this kind of scenario for these steps, then we will end up with a problem. So if we try to create one more 
copy of this particular step if I just copy paste this code here then you can see I will have a problem so what we can do is let's say I'm going to create one more binding class sorry step definition class and if I give this as a user login step step.cs or something like that and if I try to paste it here and if I save it and if I try to build this code now you can see that I get some problem here it's basically because there is an ambiguity the reason is the same step is being repeated in two different step definition files so how to resolve this kind of problem and that's why the scope binding comes into picture so we can resolve this problem by giving the scope attribute for the step so for doing that if I just add a scope attribute for this particular login let's say I want to scope this particular login given I have login into application 2 the user login feature then I can restrict the step to run for only that particular feature so I'm just going to add a scope and if you open the bracket you can see there are three different properties available so I can say features as and if I give the feature as user login feature and if I save this now you can see that the purple color is disappeared it's because this particular feature is responsible for this particular step and now even if we try to run this feature our test will only run for this particular step of the user login but if you try to run for the login features then the user login step will be executed so you can restrict the scope in here as well if you want to to reduce the ambiguity so we can give this as customer login and now this is restricted to a user login and this is restricted to a customer login so this is one way of reusing the same step definition for different features we can also restrict the same step definitions for a scenario or a tag Let's say if I want to restrict this particular step to be executed only for the user tag, then I can just restrict this as well. So I can just put a tag is equal to, then I can give the tag as user. This way I can restrict the test based on the tags. Similarly, I can restrict the step definition to be executed based on the scenarios. This is still legal. So this is the purpose of SpecFlow's scoped bindings. So thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.